Welcome to Hoover's Melting Pot. This show doesn't have everything. It just has everything you need. All right, and thank you for joining me once again for Hoover's Melting Pot Saturday, 9.24 in the morning. This is supposed to start at 8, but I lost a whole day. I thought today was Friday, I yesterday. I really thought yesterday, oh, well, tomorrow's Friday. So I've done this wonderful interview with Miss Susan, uh, Susan Swift, and I'm going to play it Saturday. So I'll have all day tomorrow to get it ready. So I started my Bible study, 7 o'clock in the morning, thinking I was starting my Galatians Bible study at 7 o'clock in the morning uh, on a Friday, Saturday. So then I thought, okay, no problem. I'll just start the interview at 8, and then her file would not upload to be live. So I had to go and put it on YouTube and then link to it on YouTube. Then I'll take it down later, and I'll put this video up on YouTube. So there it is. Thank you for joining us on The Melting pot. Um, how's everybody doing? Are you hanging in there? I mean, I saw a meme the other day I thought was really cute. It said, I, I keep running outside every morning to see, uh, which part of revelation we're in today. I love the other one that says, uh, I feel like we skipped the murder bees. Did we skip the murder bees? I feel like we did. Uh, but I mean, it's just one thing after another, isn't it? And of course, you know, all this goes to, uh, you know, everything's going on with Obama. Hillary was on trial this week. Ted Cruz is slamming away at that, along with others. Um, a lot of distractions going on. Very convenient. But up next, we've got this wonderful guest. It's it's recorded. I recorded it Thursday with her, Susan Swift. Go look her up. I've got information at the end of the video where you can find all of her stuff. But um, everything on Facebook, Instagram, all that is at, uh, at Susan Swift, I think. Anyway, go find her check her out. She was in the, uh, she's been in movies, probably the one that you'll, two of them that you'll know most would be Audrey Rose with Sir Anthony Hopkins, <clears throat> kind of a thriller. And then the other one would be, uh, Harper Valley PTA. She played the teenage daughter in that. And then going beyond that, she's mom, seven kids, wife, um, She's got some really good books out. We're going to talk about all this. So I'm just going to go ahead and play uh, the video with her. And uh, and we're just going to go from there. Hi, Vanessa. Uh, Vanessa just caught me on the last part of the live segment because after this, it's going to be recorded. And then uh, I'll come back and have some comments at the end. But our interview has got to be an hour long. So here it goes. We're going to get this in the stream. I'm going to hide me and play her and we'll see how this goes. us today for Hoover's Melting Pot, my wonderful guest, Miss Susan Swift. Now, that's your that's your official working name, but you have you hide your last name to protect the innocent, correct? You just well, you're going yeah, by I, your maiden name. I'm married and I have uh, seven kids, and you know they're various ages. One's you know already up and out, but I, I still have several at home, and they don't volunteer to be called names. So yeah, right. Kind of, you know. And coming out of the industry that you come out of, and to be a conservative homemaking making person after you know, oh, and that's not. I, I've, you, I've been called a breeder. I've been called a conservative. Well, it's close to that, but you know, I, I get called names. Isn't that? Uh, I was at a park once, uh, close by to my home, and I had the little kids. We were kind of running. It's it's Descanso Gardens. It's a beautiful place, and this very tall, uh, like probably six foot three woman, very strong looking, you know, aggressive woman, told me that my children should not be running in around on the grass and in the garden because it's a contemplative garden for adults. And I was a breeder. 
That's just so incredible. I, just didn't, I didn't have my membership anymore. I said, okay, I'm done. That's it. Fine. Because if I can't, if I can't let the kids walk on the grass over there, if Descanso Gardens is just for adults, then I should just go to a park. So I did. That was it. But yeah. yeah so I, I've gotten called names and I get joked at because I have seven kids and people are, I don't know if they, if they enter, I think they're being gentle, but they, they always joke, well, do you know where they come from? So there, there is a little bit of a hostility for women who are very open to life. And am I such a threat that I'm having more than the, you know, 2.2 children that yeah. you think is appropriate? And I guess I'm blowing up the world with all these little carbon footprints. So well, no, no. Excited. See, my thing is I've got a good friend, Dallas and Lindsay Lacaz. They have 10. We have a group of people at our church in Decatur. They have 10. They come out of the Mennonite <laughs> culture. And so I always congratulate them on doing their part to fight Islam. That's, I'm just like, look, we've got to, you know, I mean, that's, they have, they usually have about seven kids and see that I'm, I'm just keeping up with the uh, Islamic average. And that's right. you know, I mean, it, it, so I mean, yeah, you kind of, you kind of tell me what's wrong with that, but it, it's all about global warming. Look, it's the same thing that's wrong. That's what motivates the left on the abortion issue. It is, it is population control. Literally. Yeah. They do want to snuff out uh, the little carbon footprint prints. Yeah. It, it started in a eugenics movement. That's what, you know, Margaret Sanger, and I love to make fun of her. I like to do Margaret Sanger with a German accent, like, yeah, we want to make sure the babies are healthy. Oh my God. Children, you know, so I can just see her smoking a cigarette and, und, no, and talking like a German, like we must, we must have euthanized children, you know, just. I, this, this, you, you need know, to do a skit, like just dress up oh, and. Good. I have some I mean, little guys I, I, standing over at the side, just, you know, throwing oh, I it did, up. I did, some, I did some YouTube videos for Earth Day with a German, with, the, with Margaret Sanger on Earth Day, just oh to mock God. and ridicule the leftist notion that, you know, children have to be, you know, carefully planned and grown under their weeds. We must have ripped them out of the garden. You know, it's just, it's the sick mentality that children are some sort of, um, something to be killed and, and that they're going to that they're that we humans are going to overwhelm the earth which is just bogus we're all part of god's creation and yeah. it, we were created as part of this wonderful creation we were we were given to be stewards and there's nothing that america is doing that's that is anything in comparison to what china does with right. all of its so if you're going to talk to me about global warming just go clean up the yangtze river first please right just, well the inconsistency it's just so rampant, inconsistency, consistency, and the logic. Um, the, there's just no logic. There's no, you know. I, I I'm famous for saying I don't mind playing by the rules, but I'm going to play by the same rules. I use that when I'm talking to people about the validity of the Word of God, because they'll talk about, well, how do we know Plato was valid? How do we know Caesar's Gallic Wars? How do we know, um, you know? Uh, all these different writers. And I, and I say, okay, well, those tests that you're using for that, I will, I'm okay with those, but then you can't say, well, since it's the Bible, we're not going to use those tests. And so it's the same thing. We, we're seeing it like crazy, aren't we? I mean, nowadays there's nothing. Trey Gowdy came out the other day and he said, people in America don't have a problem laying down their rights if you have a reason for them to do it. And the more rights they have to lay down, the better your reasoning has to be. So, right. and what, and once the reasons stop, or once we have either been given inconsistent reasons and, and they're not, they're not making sense anymore. Right. Right. Like with the COVID, you know, scare at first it was going to be, we were going to shut down for two weeks and then maybe to four. Right. And now I'm, I'm living in, in LA and we're just now it's eight weeks and more and yeah. we're still not to go to church, to go to church, to worship peacefully. Now, now I will say, if you bring a brick and you say you're protesting, you're probably good. You can, right. But you know, if you want to just go to church, the state, the state proscribes that the church must have people in front of the church. They have to take down your name and your address, right? And take your temperature. If you don't pass those things, or if you get there too late, obviously, they will refuse you entry. If you do have a good temperature and you have given their na your name and everything, then, then they'll walk you to your seat. You will sit down in your pew. You are not allowed to move. 
from your seat. If you need to go to the restroom, you must raise your hand like you're in kindergarten, all right? And if you do get up and move or anything, what happens is the, the people at the church who, you know, volunteered to kind of, I guess, take your name, they must report you to the state. They are, they are deputized. They, are, they, they become agents of the state to report who's moving around, okay? That, that's, that's just to get there and to listen to the word of God. That, and, 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 yet, and yet we've got riots in the streets. And we've Just got a, people who are running around without masks. And so uh, to me, the, with the riots, COVID is over. We're, we're, if we don't yeah. have a quadrupling of cases and deaths, if we don't have deaths, right, right. then I, I'm not going to listen to this anymore. I know it's, I know it's contagious, but it's, it is not fatal to most people. And the people we should be taking care of are the elderly, the people who have health problems, things like that. Those are the ones that we should be helping and sheltering perhaps, but you're, what you're telling me, the state of California is telling me I cannot go worship. It, I, they don't want me on my knees in church. Yeah. They want me on the, my knees in the streets of LA, kneeling like some sort of social justice warrior singing yeah. Kumbaya. They want that. And I'm supposed to, I'm supposed to feel like guilty or something because I don't have, I, because I, I didn't do anything, but I'm supposed to kneel in the streets and they're yeah. all over Drew, you know, Football players who now who are refusing to kneel, but I can't go into my church and kneel because I'm going to spread some sort of disease that isn't deadly, really. Yeah. I mean, this is this is what we're talking about in both instances, whether it's the the civil unrest or whether it's all of these rules of the state. This is the exercise of state police power. Right. That's what we're in both cases. And we are righteously concerned about an excess of police power when when you are not obeying the the rules that LAPD or Minnesota PD lay down. Because unless it says in the Minnesota PD book, yes, you're supposed to put your knee on somebody's neck. Right. Right. Those officers are in big trouble because I, I haven't I haven't read the manual or anything like that, but I can't believe that you're supposed to put your, your knee on somebody's neck for eight and a half minutes. I can't yeah. believe that that's in a, a manual. I, I haven't read it. I'm sorry. I haven't even watched it. I've seen like a clip of the video and that was enough for me. I don't want to say it. Yeah. So either either these police officers are within the law according to Minnesota PD, right? The book, right? They're 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 acting according to how their city officials have trained them right. or they're not. Yeah. If they're not, they're rogue and they should be sent away. If they are, then we have to look at the, at the Minnesota PD and see, okay, who authorized that? That's, and that is a very, very important, important exercise to do because that is the exercise of state power. Yeah. Did the state exceed, it, 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 did the Minnesota PD exceed the, the limits of its power? And that's where, where the money lies, frankly. Well, and the exercise of power is, is this is the question I tell people all the time because I catch a lot of flack because I'm very outspoken. And of course, as a pastor, I don't know how this happened, but you're not supposed to talk about politics at all. And I do all the time, but they, you know, the thing about it is I tell people all the time, it's not about masks. It's not about social distancing. It's not about, it's about who decides. The, the problem is, is I want the I want the government to take care of roads and military, and then I'll tell you. Let me get your comments on this. Bill Whittle, mentioning Bill Whittle, came out and originated this idea in my mind, and I've built on it. But he said, if we're going to do this, I don't think there's anybody that doesn't think we've got to have some kind of an emergency powers clause. But he said, if we're going to do that from now on, we've got to have an amendment that says the governor has emergency power for ten days. After 10 days, he can extend that, but only with the permission of the legislature. And then, and, and so it has to be voted on. His powers have to be spelled out. This is what we can do. This is what we can't do. And then to take it even further, I would say this is what, where we have to be to qualify for a pandemic. Because I just found this out last week, 1968, I'm two years old. We had N3H2, I think it was called. 100,000 people died in the United States. They still held Woodstock. We, you know, th- why are we doing this this way? What, do you, what are your thoughts on this? Because this is not the first time. It's not going to be the last time. And th- but this is the first time that we've quarantined the healthy. Right. Instead of quarantining those who are either at risk or sick. Yeah. And all I can think after, as long as this has gone on, uh, I think there was there was a real scare that China had 
had created this somehow in a lab, either accidentally or maybe through research, maybe maliciously, we'll never know, but that, that this, this chimera of whatever this was, the snake, bat, you know, corona, whatever this was, and it somehow got out, we don't know how, but that scared everyone. We saw what, what China had to do, and they, they were literally um, welding people inside their apartments. Yeah, and that remember was original. That? Remember, it was scary. And Yeah, and the original two dark. and three weeks, I was like, okay, yeah. let's back up, see right. what's going on, but they so, just keep moving the goalpost. Right, well, and so it, it made sense for President Trump to say, okay, sure. we're suspending airplane. We're, we're, not gonna, we're not gonna go there like that. It made sense, yeah. all right? So, and again, Americans are very commonsensical. We will all rise to a challenge. We will address anything as, a, as we are unified. It's so ironic, yep. isn't it? That we as a nation unified to protect you know, the vulnerable with COVID. We yeah. can do the same thing again with, with everything having to do with you know, the, the riots that are going on. We but are. We are so all in agreement, riots, don't you think? This is, but, but I think it's been hijacked. These, yes. The protests, right. because there's something different. I, yeah, it, like, a protest is that is protected political speech of the highest order. That's you when bet. you and I together as a group, we do a group activity, right? We get other people together. We're doing it peacefully, and we are within the, the bounds of the Constitution. And it is very important that everyone protest lawfully and be allowed to protest. That's, what right. our, that's one of the, the, the sacred protections of our constitution yeah. but a protest is not a riot when you start hurting people and breaking things you're a riot and your speech it is no longer speech you can right. try to say it's speech but it's not and that's why that's when the state has the power to shut you down yes and and now we're seeing okay finally the the riots are kind of calming down right a little bit a, a tiny bit and yet all of a sudden we've got these these COVID restrictions in the parenthetical states, New York, uh, LA, you know, the parentheses of the United States, they're still just driving. Look, I, the last time I checked, this is several days ago, what, there'd been 2,100 cases in Los Angeles, 2,100 deaths, uh, in, not in Los Angeles, California, 2,100 deaths. This is uh, several days ago, okay? 2,100 yeah. deaths total. Half of those had been in nursing homes. Makes right. Sense, right. Okay. So for roughly 1,100 deaths in the entire state of California, right, we have shut down one of the most powerful economies in the world for 1,100 deaths. Yeah. Now I, I get how it started, and I get how we're going there, but but they're still using COVID, and this is what answering your, to your question: Why is it still going on? I think because this is all about November. This yes. is all about the election. I agree. That's, yeah. I, I also believe now watching, having watched the riots and then what has it, the protests, which became riots. And I started seeing on Twitter just myself before the report started came, coming out, I started seeing these piles of bricks. And right. I started seeing these little skinny girls, white girls painting with, uh, you know, graffiti, BLM. Yeah. And, and black women going up to them and saying, what are you doing? Quit. You are yeah. saying, you're spray painting in our, like, like it's on us? You, you little skinny white chicks, what are you doing? Yeah. And right. I started thinking, you know, I mean, like, so the, the specter of Antifa was already, I'm thinking, oh, this is, this is astroturfed. And right. sure enough, now we've got undercover video by James yeah. O'Keefe. We have, we have confirmation by, by uh, the, the FBI. They, they've probably infiltrated an, Antifa as well. So what I think is these riots, 250, how do you organize 250 cities uh, spontaneously. Yeah, right. That, yeah, organized. that's right. This is organized. Okay. And we have enough and, and we have there, I think they're quietly arresting a lot of these people. And, and what we're seeing, what we are seeing in America right now is an attempted coup. Yes, by the absolutely. Left, by the Marxist left. That yeah. is exactly what's going on. And the media, stupid, stupid media. I call them the make believe media. Yeah, because they are. Because they make up the news and then they make you believe it. Right. They are in lockstep with, with all of this because, you know what, if it bleeds, it leads. They love to, 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 to blame racism on a Republican. Yeah. And, and that's why, they, and they are desperate to get rid of Trump. Because yeah. we're starting to see the, the the they're starting to figure out in Congress. Well, what was going on with Rod Rosenstein and the FISA court? And what what did what did they know? And when did they know it? And how did Mueller get hold of this information? And all of that. That's all just now coming out. Yeah. Uh, we, a court just said just yesterday that uh, Hillary Clinton must 
testify under oath on September 9th. So all of this is coming out. That's all in the back. Nobody's paying attention to any of that right, right. because we've got Antifa on the march, basically. Yeah. And, and, and Antifa is successfully, I think, in my opinion, branding some of this riot on, on black protesters. Yeah. And, and black protesters have a, and white protesters have a right to protest. Because if what if what we believe what we saw is true with what happened, right? That, that was absolutely a, that was a heinous use of force. They should yes. they should go to jail. They should yeah, sure. But but you don't. But but this has gone to two hundred and fifty cities. Yeah. That's because it's an election year, and that's because Antifa is starting these riots for a political reason, and that's why I believe the COVID quarantine is continuing to be extended in these blue states. Is the is the left afraid and at home? Is scared. the left is the left doing this because they are scared or are they doing it because they're sure it'll work? You know what I'm saying? Is this death throes? Look at who a, their nominee is. I know. They <laughs> he know can't he can't hold a sentence together. They are scared. They they have some look, they they didn't want to give it to Bernie, right? Because Bernie is actually the real deal, right? Yeah. He's too radical. They, they, they can't control Bernie and all That's the Bernie right. bros, right? They yep. can't. So right. Pelosi and the, and the handlers, they don't want that guy. So what they've done is they've got, they've propped up Joe. He'll, we'll, his wife will just make sure she keeps sticking her finger in his mouth every time. Right. <laughs> you know, yeah. Honey, like, bite on my finger. It's okay. You know, she's the, she's the power <laughs> behind the throne. She wants to be first lady worse than he wants to be the president. Right. Yeah. And all they've got to do, they've got to drag him across the finish line in November. And you're seeing polling after polling because all of this, I believe this is, they are losing. They're losing so badly. Everybody yeah. in America is seeing what the left, the hard left. And I'm talking about the ideologues. I'm yeah. not talking about just regular Americans who kind of voted for Democrats in the past, because this right. is not your, your grandpa's Democrat party. This is not the party of Kennedy or any of that. Right. This is the hard left, but they are absolutely desperate. And the only thing that works, and it works every time it's tried, is playing the race card. And yeah. they play the race card to silence conservatives, and they're doing it again. And this is why the riots are being, I believe, encouraged by the media, being cheered on. There's not really objective reporting going on oh, about it. Oh, of course, no. No. So it, this is a political coup. Yes. That's what, that's what we're witnessing. Between Absolutely. These, they're using fear, fear of, you know, COVID and fear of uh, race relations, right? They're trying to make everybody afraid and hate each other instead yeah. of, uh, instead of what Donald Trump has been trying to do, albeit imperfectly. All sure. Right? Yeah. But he's trying to bring America together. And that is very, that is what we need to do. And the only way to do that is by recognizing our differences and that we are one nation under God. Yeah. That's if we spend some time we come together is in church, but they yeah. won't let us go. They won't right. let us go to church. We they can go to Walmart, in the streets. go to Walmart and get an abortion, but you can't go to church. That's right. Can't go to church. We got to check, you got to, you know, you go to abortion. I'm sure they don't, if they take your temperature, if you had a, if, if you had COVID, would they turn you away from a, an abortion? <laughs> Absolutely hey, not. No. They said, hey, we'll good. Fix you up first, honey. Then we'll give you a Tylenol and send you on your way. Yeah, I I had presented to me the other day, I and I've asked this question talking about this thing that went on with this officer and and George and all that. Um, I asked the question on Facebook. I still have got an answer. Why, if this is so prevalent in the United States, why aren't we seeing this? five, 10, 20 times a day? Is it because the news media doesn't want to show those videos? Is it because nobody has videos? No, the problem is it's a rare occasion. And there, it, I'm sure that there's police brutality out there. I have no, I, no, no qualms with that. In fact, I was a pretty rough character 40 years ago in my youth and had some run-ins with the police myself. I came from a very poor neighborhood and, 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 have been in some fights with the cops. And so I know that they can get a bit excessive. Now I was stupid. I deserve to have the snot beat out of me a time or two, no doubt about it. But this is, you know, I'm saying that the media wants this. So if this were happening all over the country, 20 times a day, we would have more than two videos a year or five videos a year. I'm not saying it's not real. I'm just saying, I think you're, you would share this, that the liberal uh, progressive socialist media, it's, it's fake media, fake news. Um, they're, they're, they're not going to let it go unused. They've, found a problem and never hey we let can use a this. crisis go to waste right on the manual right yeah. never let a crisis go to waste this is about votes this is about telegraphing to uh, a block of vote voters who is 
usually African American votes, they vote, what, 95%, 96, up, upper 90s for the Democrat Party. If the Democrat Party loses even 8% or 10% of that, that vote yeah. in, key, in, you know, in, in a key race, they don't win. That means Biden has got to carry the black vote. And I just that's don't think why you're, 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 I'm, a, I'm a uniter and I have fought for racism. I mean, but you look at some of his policies and you realize that you'd actually have to pause and you'd have to actually educate people with fact and they'd have to listen to you when you when you would explain actually a lot of his policies that he was part of really didn't work they separated black men from their families etc 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 it would you, you'd have to that would require calm and right now everyone is so excited and so Oh, emotion. They don't want to. What this is all about? Revving up emotion, and the, the problem that the media and the left have is they have to find a way to keep the tensions high up yeah. until November. Yeah. Just as an example, perhaps maybe I'm reading too much into it, but Keith Ellison, who's the attorney general, I believe in Minnesota, Minnesota, um, yeah, and he just increased the charges on these four reprobate cops. Okay, now. And I was explaining this to my neighbor next next door to me. We were out actually having a glass of wine, and, and she's African-American, and she was upset. I said, I know, I know, I know, I get it. Let me explain. Let me walk you through it. Because if you charge them with something lower, like manslaughter, third degree, right, that is a much lower threshold to get proven, and the, the, the level of doubt is lower, and it's right. a much easier conviction. And that way, you make sure these guys degree or more you are raising the likelihood that you have either maybe jury misconduct or maybe you get one you know kind of weak need person on the jury or something oh, yeah, i had some doubts i don't know and you can get a hung jury yeah and then all of the lesser included charges like third degree that all goes underneath the second and you're handing a gift to the defendants to maybe get off do you and think so you're doing it on purpose uh, yeah, because look, he's just raised it up to second degree, right? And yep. and these guys are going to be fast tracked. It's not like this is going to be delayed until oh, 2022 or something. Right. What, what do you bet we're going to be having a trial at some point in like, mm, I don't know, September, October, right. right? And so we've now set the table for riots 2.0. Yeah, because they'll get off. Because they get off or, you know, it's a hung jury or da, 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 da. And, and what, what the emotions of the crowd want. See, that's what Ellison's doing. He's playing to the emotions of the yeah. crowd and mine too. I don't want I don't want police officers like this on my streets, right? right. And I love police officers. I I I I've represented them. I, I I will defend them because most of them I think are very, very good. And yeah. they they are honorable. They're like our military. They will take a bullet for me, okay? But right. I don't want bad cops doing that because I that that threatens me. That threatens right. my children, right? That's right? So I don't want it either. So everyone has the same emotion. And Keith Ellison, Antifa supporter that he is, right. is raising the, the charges, and that's giving a gift yep. to the defense that, that, that these four officers are ultimately going to get. They might be able to get off and then be you know, out and done, and then you can't charge them with anything else. And then it's going to have to be, it'll have to be up to the feds to go for four, you know, 14th Amendment, civil rights, press, blah, 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 all that. We'll have to have a second trial. So I don't know if Ellison's thinking through this. Maybe well, he's just pandering to the crowd. Let me ask you this. Do you think he's thinking through it enough to go, and if they get off, that will raise the tension between right. uh, That's what I think. black and white, and the race thing just will- Just in time for an election. For an election. I wouldn't put it past him. I don't, I look, I, I'm, just, I'm just thinking in my head. I, don't, I think you're on the right track. But I, I look at this and I go, you know, you never let a crisis go to waste. And yeah. instead of doing something to make sure that these guys go to prison, you know, for a long time, right? Instead of doing that, we're going to, what are we going to raise it? And then we're going to risk letting them off. And, and that will be, I don't know, worse. I, I, w which would be worse, to have them be convicted for third degree and get a very long sentence or to have them get off for second? I mean, yeah. you, you know what I mean? You t talk to people about that and people will come unglued. If, if you're asking, especially black, black Americans, African Americans, okay, justice will finally be done. And they, so they're going to try to believe one more time okay, the, the process will play out. We're going to see this trial and these guys will get some sort of justice, right? Yeah. And then to have that all undone yeah. because the, 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 the charges are too high, I don't know. Maybe, you know what, maybe it's all very innocent. Maybe Keith did speak to the prosecutors and they really did. We got a very strong case. We'll be able to get this done, but they're making promises. And you know what, put it down, write it down. It's Democrats. 
yeah. Democrats making promises once again to the, the African American community, we're going to get justice done for you. And if it doesn't work out like that, do you think they're going to remember that? No, no they're yeah. going to go right back to the trope that, okay, all white police officers are racist. That's yeah. the trope. That's the thing. All, all white people are racist. Yeah. That, that's what they're going to descend to. And we'll have riots 2.0 just in time for the, the elections. I, I, it looks like a setup to me. And I'm, yeah. I'm, very concerned about it. Yeah, I'm, I'm this right with you. Doesn't need this. You've done an enormous amount of thinking and research on this. You've written a book. I want to get back to that because I forgot I was going to do this earlier. I want to make sure everybody knows where to go to get your books. These are great folks. I've, I've read both of her kids, but I got, I have nine grandkids. They've all read your book. Uh, your two. Oh, uh, little good guys with guns. Good guys with, good guns. Guys with guns. And so. Right? I yep, conveniently up here yes show them to the uh your stage right and so tell us where is, where can we get them this is good guys with guns at home and Great this book. is about the good guys who use guns to protect america yep. and and they're they're you know people like you know a sheriff right and it shows i've got the good got a sheriff and his taser and this really triggers the left i'm so sorry and here's a here's a swat officer here's a swat officer it's and great. his gun and one of the, one of the, and my 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 hope was that we would show we would show children the good guys right all of them heroes they're all different colors right yeah and they all use guns to protect us and right. I want my kids if they're young I want them to see a police officer I want them to run and say I'm scared I'm lost I need help that's what I want I don't want them thinking that police officers are bad so I wrote that. Uh, for that idea. The one page that all the kids seem to really love is the interactive kind of, you can match your hero with the gun. Yeah, that's great. So you have to go back and forth and match it. So anyway, that that was one thing I did yeah. because I, I don't like how the left is demonizing guns. Guns are, look, you can, you can kill somebody with a knife. You can kill somebody with a brick, right? Yeah, and, Kane and, got and it done with a rock. A tool, right, or, or, or fire, right? I mean, there's there's any number sure. of ways. So why are we demonizing the, the, the police of the good guys? And and no, I don't think all police officers are good, are good guys, but I'd say the vast majority are. Yes, and I agree. the vast yep. majority of the military are. And so here I did a second book, which is Good Guys with Guns Abroad. Abroad. And those are for all of, all of our heroes, everyday American heroes who defend our American interests all around the world. Wonderful. And yeah. so, you know, and I just, I, this was, I did that one. This is the Marine, right? It's great. Yeah. And the, one of the little fun things is he's standing. I had the artist draw this Marine. Um, my dad was a Marine, so I had him kind of use my dad, a portrait of my dad, kind of for the face of the Marine. And he's standing in front of the Israeli embassy. Awesome. That's because wonderful. America should always defend That's you right. know, Judeo-Christian values, right? And so that, that was, that was, most people don't know that, but I have all kinds of like, I've got an Air Force pilot in here, you know? Yeah. And I wanted to make sure we had an American flag on every page. That's great. Because you Such... got to tell kids what, you know, we're all one team. Yeah, they're all one team. They're not together. getting it in school. I know. They're not. I know, but you know what? A lot of parents do what they need to outside of school, and most parents are good parents, and they care very deeply you about bet. their children, and they want their children to know about God and about the Judeo-Christian values that formed our country, and they do want everyone to come together as a nation, as a team, and to stop bullies wherever yep. bullies are. If bullies are in the police department, you stop them there wherever they are, because being an American means you're not a bully. That's right. Just, and, and you protect important. those that are being bullied. So you where can me. they, where, where can they get, get your books? These are on Amazon. Right. So you can go to Amazon um, and just type in good guys with guns at home and good guys with guns abroad and you'll find them there. And Susan Swift. So that you can find on Amazon. And you can get them on and, Kindle. So you can uh, yes, there's also do it that there, way. Also it's, I'm going to tell you it's funner with the kids to have the actual book there, though. And yeah, then because they can, the pages lay out and it's, you know, it's more it's fun. Better. Especially that interactive page. For some reason, all the kids like to match up. But it is for very young children. I, got, right. I had one woman who was fussing at me on uh, one bad review on, on uh, Amazon. It was so funny. There are no safety tips or there's no guidelines. This is not, it's not teaching gun safety. I felt like saying, hey, Karen guess what? Um, it's, <laughs> it's about the good people who use it. It's like police officers. I'm not, it, this is not a book about gun safety for three-year-olds. 
okay, three right. people are going to be holding the gun. <laughs> They're going to be holding a book, Karen. Anyway, so she, but she just lost it. She obviously liberal. She went for it. Have some fun. Go look at the reviews. It's like, brrr, goes uh, forever. Check it out. That's she awesome. But now your newest book, so pertinent to the things that are going on today. Uh, hold on. I got to itch my ear. Um, and just, uh, and I've, like I said, I'm just a few pages into it. I'm really looking forward to um, getting deeper into this, but you wrote this with an African American. I don't know who this is. Tell us a little bit about Kevin, your Kevin Fobbs. Oh, he's yeah. wonderful. Tell us. He's the best. He is a former Democrat turned conservative. Oh, so my he favorite. Is, he yes, he is a, an African American conservative. So if there's anybody that's got a bigger target on his head, you got to show him to me. He's wonderful. Right. And there yeah. he is right there. That's okay. We, we put tape over our mouths because the name of the book is Shut Your Mouth. Shut your mouth. How the left plays the race card to silence conservatives and Very stop good. it. Yeah. So, and, and this is a book about really, it's all the words you can't say if you're white. Yeah. And white and, is new black. Sorry, and, and it just is. It, it's, well, and the thing about it is this one, can you get it uh, at the same locations you can get it in? Well, no, well, you can get it on Amazon, but I would beg you guys, please. I think um, if you go through Amazon and Amazon takes like so, you know, like so much money out of it that there's no profit left at all. The right. best place to go to get this is shutyomouth.com. Okay. Shutyomouth.com and it'll direct you right to the page where you can buy the book. And there it is. Thank Very you. good. And give me, go ahead. I'm going to write these down and put these up um, when I do my post-production give me sure. where, where can they go find more stuff about you they just go to susanswift.com right that's one dot net oh Susan dot net dot net and then Susan you Swift. you have everything at susan swift right i mean all your Prima, twitter everything you can link to you know where i've written for breitbart you can where i've written for politichicks um you can get linked to both of the books but you the, i don't have a link on the page for shut your mouth so you, to go to shut your mouth it's shutyomouth.com. that's it's where a, you find the book just such a great title i i um of course i work in really strange circles so i run around <laughs> with a lot of different people because i'm southern baptist and so that's there are so many african-american uh pastors out there and preachers that are involved with that denomination so i've had some mm -hmm. really great interactions and the thing that that is so clear when you start talking is that if we spend time talking to each other we none of us feel like the media says we do it, of course not. The media is there to, to divide us. The media is incredible? there to divide us and make us afraid. And what we do is we come together. I mean, I was raised in, in Houston, Texas, in the South, right? Yeah. And uh, there, there are two religions in Texas, and you know this. Uh, there's the Baptist Church, and there's football. And that's yeah. it. Those, those <laughs> that's right. Yeah, that's right. And sometimes at the same time. So. Well, yeah, yeah. It, but we got to get our priorities straight. So, Pastor, hurry it up because, you know, by, by noon, I need to be back watching the football you know yeah and don't go over in that sermon because we don't want the methodists to beat us over to lunch and so we yes we that's don't. right <laughs> so, so very good true. it's so true now are you a uh are you uh let, let me ask you this question here's this is what i've been um accused well, you know of. if i don't know the answer i'll just play like a liberal and i'll make it up <laughs> and i'll bet you'll make a lot more sense than they do at least okay. um this is, in fact, I tell people on this show all the time, this show doesn't have everything. It just has everything you need. <laughs> so <laughs> that's good. Yeah. Um, but um, I have been saying that as far as this media thing is concerned, why are we listening? Why do you think when people know they've been wrong over and over and over, is it National Enquirer? thing is it just drama do people love drama and gossip so much that they can't recognize and go you know even with this COVID-19 thing they got everything wrong they didn't get anything right none of the models I, were right I think I think people um there, there's two facts first of all yes everybody loves drama life is drama and if you've ever been a teenage girl that's what it's all about is drama right it's all got to be the gossip, the drama, that every day is drama. It's the yeah. biggest drama ever, okay? Right. So that's part of it. But the other part of it, I think a lot of people, just regular Americans and conservatives, I think we're all secretly hoping that maybe, just maybe, hmm. this time, the media 
will finally realize and they'll tell the truth and they'll say they're sorry and they'll say, okay, yeah. And they'll, they'll come li like, like it was in World War II when finally America, the, the resolve was we've got to beat these right. German bastards because yeah. they're putting people in ovens and they're killing people in Europe and we are going to go over there and we're going to kick some, you know what, and take yes. some names. That's we're right. going to get them. And, and that was it. And that's when the media, all we all rallied together and we had all of this, it was propaganda, right? But it, it coalesced around the resolve of America. And I do believe that most, most regular Americans are hoping, they still are, are hoping that the media will realize the error of their ways, like an errant child. I mean, what what are you happiest when you know your 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 teenage kid who's just been a, a pain all his life or her life, right? And they come home and they say, "I'm really sorry, mom." What kind of a right. Then you're overjoyed, right? It's the prodigal son story. We're waiting for our media to say, yeah. "Okay, you were a prodigal son. We'll forgive you. We'll we'll wel welcome you." But people like you and me, we've been watching it. I mean, I I I, I literally was um I, I was. My mother had a, a television show for 10 years uh -huh. in Houston, Texas. And she was a phenomenon. This was before The View, before anybody did um, political shows. My mother did a show called Inquiry. Uh -huh. And she was at a table with other women. And they would, we, they would ask serious political questions of politicians in the day, like Barbara Jordan they had on. They had the governor of Texas. They had uh, Ben Barnes, different people, luminaries in, in politics. And yeah. I was... I was under the table. I was conceived. I was under that table there at that time. So I was born in politics yeah. with, the, with the notion that we really, we do believe that our media, they're supposed to be a watchdog. They're supposed to be giving us the facts so that we can judge both sides. So we can look at re Republicans who are, you know, out of line. We can go, oh, yeah, they're doing it again. Or we can look at the Democrats and say, no, 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 yeah, you're lying, whatever. But we, we want to trust. We want a media that we can, we can believe. And I've grown up watching it I, through the, the, the Nixon, all of these things. I was very, very young, but I remember it. And, and we've, they've broken faith with us. Yeah, The media absolutely. has broken faith time and time and time again. And yeah. now thanks to the internet and all of the different you know, avenues that are out there, enough of us are saying, enough. We, we're going to take off your mask. Your, your fake face yeah. because you're lying to us. You're not telling us that you have an agenda. At least if you're going to go on, you can say, look, I'm a staunch conservative. I'm going to give it to you the way I think it's coming down. At least that's honest, right? right. But if you're, if you're trying to be you know, CNN and the MSNBC and NBC, all these, and, and we've, James O'Keefe has, has videos showing NBC faked an entire COVID-19 testing center and put it on the news, yeah. for goodness sakes. Incredible. They didn't have enough people. They said, well, let's line them up here. So when, when, they, when our media has been exposed time and time and time again as liars, I call them the make-believe media because they do make up the news and then sure. they make you believe it. And time and time again, so we, we don't trust them. They are the prodigal son of America. They are the, they're the long lost son and we want them to come across the desert and say, I'm sorry, I blew it. I see what you, I did. I did this. I created to a degree this riot. I created the COVID scare. I did it. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm never going to do it again. I will report the facts and I will, I will be judicious. I will get confirmation. I'll do this and I'll never do this again. We would welcome them back with open arms, yeah, but they're I not agree. doing it. They have a political agenda. Their agenda is very similar to the Marxist Antifa, which is to tear this country down. They want, they want Trump gone and they don't care how they get him gone. So instead of legitimate criticisms against him and backed up with facts and, and, and things that would make more sense, they're just going for the sensationalism. Yeah. So we don't trust our media. And that, that is a, that's a crying shame. It's devastating. It's devastating yes. because they are actually have been for so many years, really a fourth leg of our government. You know, I, yes. I agree with so many other people I've heard say, I don't care if the media, in fact, I want the media to go after Trump. Great. But go right. after that's everybody else. Go after right. everybody else with equal fervor. When Just they do come it out, fairly. that's right. When they're given a pass to, you know, right. they get Joe Biden on. Go there. after go after Trump. Go after Obama. Go after Hillary. Go after Rod Roden, Rosenstein. Yeah. Go after all of them, but do it equally, fairly, yeah. with the same fervor and, and expose them all. But you guys in the media, you all have an agenda. Yeah. And we all know it now. And that, that's why we're fed up with you because we can't trust you. You're liars. Yeah. That, is and it, that's why they're, they're furious at Trump because Trump called them fake news. And yeah. that bugs them. Well, I'll that tell you what. Because it he, revealed what they really are. 
he blew me away. I, I was yeah. never, I was not a never Trumper by any means. I was an anybody but Hillary. Um, but yep. Trump too. was not my first pick and I was really afraid he was just a flip side of the coin for Hillary. And he just came out and I was wrong. So wrong. And he, I've yep. just been so pleased now, you know, I'm like everybody else. Um, you know, maybe get off some of the tweets or something, but even that it's like, how would we know? I want a fighter. Okay. Yeah, if he, he tweets too much or if he uses bad language, okay, fine. I want a fighter yep. because my media and all of the left has been calling me names for decades. Right. No one's defending me. Yep. No one's defending my love for my country, my desire for everyone to have peace and harmony and prosperity and yep. jobs and all of these things, regardless of color. I want everybody to succeed. And yet I'm called names all the time. So I want it. I, we finally, all of us, we elected a junkyard dog. Oh, yeah. To and good for him. Us. Yep. A builder, somebody who hadn't been in politics, who would fight for us and use bad, you know, potty mouth language. That's right. fine. I don't care because I'm sick and tired of people punching me and, and using me as a punching bag and calling me names because that it, because it's not fair because yeah. they, they have an agenda. They don't present it fairly on both sides. That's why Fox News is very popular. That's why the rise of the Internet, why Breitbart started. I mean, oh, Andrew yeah. Breitbart invited me in for bigjournalism.com when it, that was the very first month it started because it was just citizen journalists you know i'm not really a journalist i'm just a citizen but that, that's how i got started with that yeah. because so many of us are sick and tired of the lies we don't like to be called these names we don't like to be, be branded like this and where is our defender yeah and that, that's what i think most most women in america want you know if you ask me what, what women want they want defenders they want men who will stand up yeah. Honorable men, not bad, you know, abusive men. We don't want abusive men, so don't say that I'm abusive. No, not at all. It's just like I, I watched this thing the other day. That's right. I watched this video the other day where a lady went into a, it looked like a lady went into a store. She didn't have a mask on. And, yeah, yeah, and they chased her out. And they chased her out. And I thought they there would have been some hurting people if they'd treated a lady like that. Mm -hmm. Even this guy in the park, listen. The two Karens, you know, the gal with the dog and the African American. They, they choking were her dog to death. Yeah, while well, she's lying about a, a an African American man who's just standing there. Terrible, yeah. terrible woman. But let me tell you this: I agree, and I got a little bit of this from Michael 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 Knowles. Is that what kind of a guy? Come on now, where's chivalry? What kind of a guy eggs a gal on, films her, and then lets somebody ruin her life? Take the high road. You know what? If she's lost her mind, I don't know. Uh, I, no, I, I understand. Know. Okay. I know there are two I, I sides wish, of this. You know what? I wish we had the luxury, but I got to tell you, men are under attack. Not, I'm not, I'm not talking about race. I'm talking about gender. They yeah. are under attack. That is the next wave of attack coming. They have been, they've been redefining marriage. They've been redefining what is masculine and feminine. You got to, your, your cisgenders and your, you're offending people when you call them he or she or they, all of that. Yeah, right, That's right. the next line of attack. I'll tell you why. Because most men in America a generation ago would not have put up with a lot of the abuse that women get and all of it. They, right. they wouldn't. And so they're, they're, they're muzzling men. They're muzzling Christian men. We talk about this actually in the book, that that's the real target. The real target is, is white Christian men and Christians right. in general, because yeah. they don't want, they don't want chivalry. They don't want you to stand up and protect your family and protect your country. They're yeah. going after the men. They're going to shut you up. And that's, that's the rise of this, you know, feminism, which I guess Rush Limbaugh has called, you know, the, the you know, the feminazis, which is a yeah. beautiful term, but yeah. that's what it is. It's this militant feminism that denies really actually gender relations, that all men are bad, all men are pigs. It's, it's the same mantra saying all police officers are abusers. It's the right. same ideology because it's to divide. We want, we got to divide America right, right down the bedroom, right? We yeah. want to, we want all women to say that, you know, that marriage is rape. Okay. And I guess all sex is rape. So we should just start going in conceiving in test tubes. Right. right. Yeah. And then we'll carefully control those little, those little, little footprints and we'll make sure that we raise them to be gender neutral. Give me a break. We're just, we are destroying the, 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 what God created. Yeah. And we're doing it and we're, and we're going to go after men next. And that is, I think just, it's, it's shameful. But yeah. That's it the is. next battleground is gender. <clears throat> Pardon after me. racism is all done let me so let me ask you this um i get i catch a lot of flack because i'm not a pretty words kind of guy i don't 
uh, you know, I don't curse, but uh, I don't care if somebody does. It doesn't bother me at all. I catch some flack from Baptists about that. I was in the military a uh, hundred pounds ago or so. And, uh, you know, I would be, I would be offended if I was watching a military movie and some general said, well, gosh, darn it, guys, you can't act like that. I'd be like, yeah, whatever. Um, but I just recently f fell under. Sorry. No, no problem at all. We'll say hi to the puppy. Um, oh my gosh. No, no problem at all. I'm surprised. I'll get my little dog. Hang on. Hang on. Yeah. Well, goodness gracious, is isn't that, that's a handful of cute right there. Oh, this give is Mama chopper. some kisses. Chopper. Yeah, and now, and now kissing, lick. But anyway, yeah, uh, yeah he's I'm got one kidding. tooth. He's a rescue. He's 11 years old. <laughs> this is his debut, so there you go. Yep, very good to see you, Chopper. Glad to have you on with us. I'm sure you're also sorry, a conservative, sorry. so that's good. Um, I don't even know where I was now. I'm so sorry. No, 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 it's okay. This, this would happen with or without Chopper. 100 pounds um, ago in the military. Oh, yeah, yeah. And so I, I, the other day I said, look, <clears throat> this is what I said. If you think that standing six feet away from somebody and then using the exact same keypad that they use at Walmart without it being washed in between um, is going to help you out in any way, you're an idiot. Now, yeah. I, I, was call, I was called out and said, that's not how Jesus would talk and act. And I said, you know, everybody's really free with Jesus loves you, but they don't like when we remind him that he said snakes and vipers brood and he called them whitewashed yeah, walls. A, and, I think he brought a, a cat of nine tails into the temple. Into the and the then temple. he started turning over the fence and says, do not make my, my, my house of prayer into a den of thieves. I do remember you, that. He got yeah. righteously angry. Do you think we need to be done to that extent? Do we need to, because this is what I'm doing. People all the time say, Hoover, you're not going to convince those people. I said, I'm not trying to convince those people. I'm trying to convince the 80% of the world's population or the United States population like us that they need to speak out, that they don't, it's, it's okay to rock the boat. And it's okay to say, I'll give you a perfect example. You tell me what you think about this. I was, I drive a school bus. We were in there, everybody for the first part of the COVID-19 came in and said this, 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 two people, 10 of us in there, two people. And they said, and they're just panicked. And so I let this go on for four or five days. And then finally I said, Hey, I appreciate what all I got to say. But from this point on, when you bring it up, I'm going to have my say. I think that's fair. And, and the other eight people went, yeah, yeah, because they knew where I was going. And I shut it down. I, I just shut it down. I just said, I, I just don't, this is, just doesn't make any sense. And we're doing it because people just want to see people do something. So my goal is to get the 80% of Americans who believe in creation to speak up and go, why are we teaching evolution when even, you know, whether you're Hindu, Muslim, Christian, whatever you are, uh, Jewish, you believe in some type of creation, and yet we're teaching uh, the Big Bang, when 80% of our country doesn't believe. We let 20% of the country tell us what to do. What do we do about that? Do we start to fight back? Do we need to? I think, I think a lot of people in the, in the peace of their own homes, they do what they need to do, and they tell their kids. I mean, public schools need to be um, cleansed. Religion, yeah. Okay? Yeah. They need to be cleansed because public schools, their, their goal was, it was, it's a very noble one, which is look, just teach reading, writing, arithmetic, right? And, and everybody else, you know, you go home and you get your religion and yeah. that's fine. That's Good. fair. But the problem is they, especially at least in California, I, I can't speak to a lot of other states. My, my mom was a teacher in Texas and in California, so she saw both, but, but at least in California, they have politicized and they use the polit the public schools as indoctrination yeah, camps, you bet. okay? And so more and more people are opting to homeschool or to, to send their kids to their own religious schools. And yeah. they're making it harder and harder to do that. And there's actually, um, there've been a movement in California several times now, we, we, we keep failing to get enough signatures on it for school choice. And there is, there's another, I think another ballot initiative coming up for school choice. And the reason it's twofold, first of all, um, if you're going to believe in choice, I believe in education choice. All right. You can't, I don't, I, I think you, I, I should have a, as a parent, I should have the choice to where my kid goes to school. All right. right? So freedom of choice, if, if we're going to co-opt the left's language about abortion, right? Because that's what they all say. It's about my body, my choice. Doesn't, yeah. they don't count the baby's body. But right. if, if once I've decided to have that little, you know, little carbon footprint, 
I should have a say on how it's it's educated, right? Yeah. Right. That's called choice, right? Well, what happens is all of the taxpayer dollars are are held in Sacramento and doled out to only the public schools, right? The, a school choice initiative would would create a voucher system so that the money flows to whom wherever the child is sitting. So if right. I pull my child out of the public school elementary and drop him over here at the private uh, elementary school, the money goes from the public to the private. Perfect. And we don't care. We it doesn't so long as the the school is a legitimate school, right? Not bomb throwers are us or something. Yep. And they're not. Most of them are already they're all there. I mean, most people know. And and even if they're sketchy schools, if you even if they're kind of like substandard, not bomb throwers, but you know, even if they're do, not doing very well, a parent within a year or two will be looking and saying, "My kid can't read. I'm going to move my kid." But yeah. what you do is you divorce the funding from the districts, so that then districts have to come they have to compete with private schools right that way i would have the money to be able to afford the private schools and it wouldn't be just rich people who can you know like you know obama who can send his kids to you know bethesda or wherever right it's yeah. not it's not going to be the elites who control it it'll be as long as there's a seat open and if i want to drive my kid halfway to to bakersfield for a, a school I'll do it, right? I'm fine with that, yeah. and it'll be my choice. That that is the that is the existential threat to government control in California because the teachers union is the biggest union that there is. That yeah. is where all the money is. They a lot of the teachers don't even want to pay the dues, but they're mandatory. They must pay the dues, and they have to the the dues stay in the district, and they the the union then launders the money essentially by giving it to re-elect Democrats who yeah. continue this whole thing. The only hope that we have in California is a, a, a person-driven initiative, basically a voter initiative that says, no, we are going to have vouchers so that the money comes from Sacramento and goes right to private schools as well. Then you will see every dollar that the state has, every dollar that the, the, the California Democrat Party has, and every dollar that the teachers union had, they will throw toward the election to prevent that from happening because that's the end of unions and that's the end of Democrat control in California. Right. And so Trump is behind this, experience. right? Pardon? I mean, he's, he's right on board. Uh, President Trump is right yes, on board is, with this and idea. Betsy DeVos. I mean, Love they're, they're yeah. right. They're right on the money with this. Yeah. Um, but it has to happen at a state level because I don't want federalism. I mean, right. one of, one of the, 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 and you're hearing these clowns. I thought there was some liberal guy that they had on Fox the other night who was saying, we need to have, you know, federal oversight of, uh, uh, you know, police departments, something along those lines. Yeah. Be very careful what you wish for. You may get it because I do not want a federally run police state. Right. I would much rather have control over the LAPD and be able to, uh, you know, inspect the, the sheriff of the county and the LAPD, the mayor, all of these people. I want them listening to me. I don't want to have to go to Washington, and I certainly don't want, you know, a blue ribbon committee of a bunch of senators overseeing countrywide policing standards. And that's what you're gonna hear from kind of these Antifa operatives, I believe, because what they've been, they've been wanting this for years, for a decade or more. They want state control of the military federal police power. That's right. what they did. That's why, that's why the, 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 the newspapers were getting a little bit nervous with uh, Trump's threatening to, to invoke the Insurrection Act to yeah. use the military. Because when you've got the American military, the 101st Airborne, firing on American citizens, you think that's gonna go well? It's not. Right. We don't want federal police power. What we want is we wanna inspect these local, we wanna keep it as local as possible so that if we see a, a rogue cop out of line, Amy Klobuchar, hello, where were you? Boom. When this guy who had what, 18 or 19 problems and you didn't do anything about it? Well, Amy, we could have you, you're job in a sling and you, we could have stopped that if we had if if we'd been paying attention yeah that's not the federal jobs part that that's minnesota and that's those are people that need to be paying attention but that gives me as a citizen much more power if it is local control i yeah. don't want federal national standards for policing yeah. that'll just make it worse that's that'll right. be far worse yeah that's right i agree 100 percent. well Listen, I could go on with you forever. You're wonderful to have on the show, but it's been an hour. I know you've got a oh life and uh, my son. A little life. We're, we're, we are allowed to go to the store if we yeah. wear a mask, right? Yeah. I feel Isn't like, that... why don't we just get it over and just put a big tent over us? Let, me, let me ask you one more question before we get out of here, because I will tell you, I live in Missouri, and had I not ever seen the news, I would not know that COVID-19 existed. 
Um, right. There's, there's been no effect here. I heard, I believe it was Prager, Dennis Prager, right? Um, Dennis. Said the other day, do you think, I want, I want your thoughts on this. He said, do you think for a moment that had the largest outbreak been in Oregon and Idaho, that California and New York would have shut down their economies? Do you have any well, thoughts? I know it started in Seattle. I yeah. know it started in Seattle and California was very quick to shut it down. Yeah. And I, I think that was smart in the beginning because we didn't want it spread. It was spreading. But you got to remember how it came over. It came, I believe it was a, a, an American citizen who was of Chinese descent who was returning from Wuhan and came into Seattle. That's uh -huh. where that started. So it came from China originally. Um, and then the one in New York was an Iranian citizen, American citizen, Iran. So it, it came from two different locations at this, uh, about the same time. Yeah, I think, um, though, his point was is that is – that, um, he believed that New York, had they had the 600 cases and Oregon had the 11,000 cases, that New York would have said, hey, praying for you, Oregon, yeah, right. but we're not yeah. shutting anything down. No, they wouldn't. They see, they, they, they want, they're doing, the, they did so, they've kept the subways open to this day. Those are Incredible. little infection tubes. Yeah. And, 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 and if you talk to a New Yorker, they'll argue with you, well, we don't have any other way to get around. And that's when you start saying, well, then get innovative. Uh, maybe you do need cars. Maybe it's smarter to walk or maybe other means of transportation. But to force people to say, well, all you nurses and doctors and everybody go in these tubes of where, where it's, it, you're contained, you're confined for yeah. 30 minutes at a time sometimes. That makes no sense. And then Cuomo ordering the patients into nursing homes. Oh, my he just, gosh. He's just trying to kill off the votes there so that they can mail ballots to dead people at the nursing homes excuse me but wow. th this was so badly handled but yeah. yes it's it's a democrat issue cuomo yeah. is now he just threw de blasio under the bus yeah. a couple of days ago yes yeah, saying unless yeah. you get this right i'm gonna i'm gonna send the national guard in so we're watching a democrat throw another democrat under the bus i'm loving it so much winning right yeah. because democrat policies have made it worse in, in New York City, not better. And and hey, if anybody ever says any more, if I ever hear any more liberals saying, we really need to have all of the you know people living in uh, cities and away from the country because of you know global warming and carbon footprints and everything, I'm gonna laugh out loud. Yeah. We know it's best to live in the country and we need nice lots of air and, and sunshine. That keeps us healthy. Living in these tall, tall buildings and on all you know confined in, in elevators and, and subways, that just spreads disease. That's yeah. not healthy. Yeah, that's New right. York City is not a healthy place to be. Obviously. That's what liberals want. They want all their little workers and drones in a, in a, a city central and control. Again, it's population control. And, yeah. and I, so I, I just, I think that this part of, part of the hysteria from the media is driven by liberal politics in New York and in California and everything. It, again, it worked well. We were very happy in California for about three or four weeks. We're like, okay, this makes sense. Okay, this makes sense. We flattened the curve. We should have already had a flattening the curve party. Like, yay, we did it. We, we did all it. came together. We were Americans. We did it. You know what? The, there are hospitals that don't have enough patients and they're, they're threatening that they're going into the red because right. everybody has, has said, well, I'm not going to take uh, my elective surgery. I don't get my, my, my knee replaced or whatever. Everybody is, we all took a hit for the team, right? Yeah. to save the vulnerable and now our hus our hospitals don't they can't stay in working anymore so we we won we when when's the victory party when right. do we get to you know all go have pizza after a football game basically say yay we did it now we can start you know the, the curve will be flat but it'll be longer so we'll still have some cases but that's okay and yet we've got i think it was um uh was it my governor, yeah, it was. It was um, California News Newsom, I believe it was said, or maybe it was Garcetti. I can't remember which one, but I think it was Newsom who said, "We are not going back. To, this is going to be the new normal until there's a vaccine." There's never been in the history of medicine a vaccine for a coronavirus. There's yeah. other vaccines for other viruses, but not a coronavirus. No such thing. It it it, it hasn't happened ever in the history yeah. of medicine. So if you're going to wait and say this is the new normal until we get a vaccine, well then guess what? That gives the state power forever. Well, we and then what do we, what do we do what then? what are we going to do when we get a vaccine? They're going to force us to all take it? Force what vaccine. about my body, my choice? Yeah. We've so got a vaccine. Say, Thank you. I don't want the vaccine. I'll go ahead and get the, uh, the, the disease. I'll take my risk. Let me just go to church. Let me go to the, the thing. Just look, what we need is we need a nationwide um, statement that 
you're on, you're on, basically you're on your own liability yeah. That, yeah. You, that you waive liability and that you can go to the stores. Otherwise the businesses will not open because they're afraid that some cl clever little lawyer is going to come and say, well, you know, I was in this store and two weeks later I got COVID. Good I'm going to sue you. Even if you don't have the proof, the lawsuit will just drag on for a long time. Yeah. So you need to free the businesses and free the people and say, look, COVID is part of our existence now. Uh, you're probably going to get it. And so you cannot sue a business or a church or, you know, private entity a, yeah. or a public entity, a, a school. Tell, tell our kids go back to school. We're looking at next year. We can't put kids back to school. The, 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 they're crazy. The, the kids have to all sit six feet apart, no more than 15 children in a room. And you have to wipe everything down and everybody's wearing masks even at, at recess. Those are happen. some of the craziness going out that they're being floated. And then yeah. colleges, we're all doing, um, we're doing uh, remote learning. They're, yeah, gonna, they're not going yeah. back to college. They're all going to be sitting in mom's basement again for another semester. Kill me now. Right. Because yeah. I've got two college students who are doing that. We're all on top of each other. Right. This is not, and they're just fine saying, well, we're this the new normal until we get a vaccine. Yeah. There's no such thing. No, you, you can't do this. And what gives the government this level of power is yeah. what frightens me. We've got to That's stop it. To We've got to That's put a time, stop to it. It's time to go back to starting to get normal and be this. smart about protecting the vulnerable and not the healthy. Yeah, that's right. One, I, I keep saying one more thing, but I just got to have you touch I'm on this real quick. We, no, I no, I, I could, I, I could sit here. No, it's perfect. That's this is uh, about having you on because multiple little sections. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, this is gonna go. This will go really good. This is the way my show usually runs. Um, but uh, my wife is an emergency room nurse of thirty years, oh. and one of the things that she brought up, two things. She said, uh, you know, uh, we we've got. A vaccine for the flu and we still lose 45 to 60,000 a year she said and secondly if vaccines work then what's the problem if you want to get the vaccine then you get it and you're protected okay. and 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 it works and so now you're you why if me not having the vaccine then doesn't affect you tests? then why do we need anything right we don't and then you have a choice how about i have a choice and you have a choice i'll get the vaccine you don't what's wrong with that yeah, mm -hmm. I think I think we just need to go back to demanding. I, I I am at a point. I'm a not. I don't like to be confrontational. I really don't. But I'm at a point where I'm just like when people say things, I'm going to start going. Where's the? Tell me why that works. I want to know how you came to that. How did you come to that conclusion? That oh, you know, I, I was a, I was accosted on the side. I'm just walking my dog on the side. Well, you saw a little chopper there. He's you know. He, <laughs> so I'm Very just dangerous. walking him. And this this you know. Um, liberal woman we'll call her karen okay and so she she's walking and she said you really should be wearing a mask now she's walking in the middle of the street and i'm walking on a sidewalk yeah and so she's walking by me you should really be wearing a mask and i said oh it's unconstitutional because my, my local city has said you have to wear a mask out. so i'm like nah not in the sunshine by myself alone i'm not even in a group forget it. that's unconstitutional and she said constitutional my ass i bet you're a trump supporter i bet you're a conservative <laughs> I hope you get sick. And I said, wow, you must be a Democrat because you're hoping that other people get sick. Yeah, amen. And, good, and good that, comeback. There, there's, there's a difference right there. Yeah, it, that's and exactly right. Yeah. That's, and these the people, the, the, the Karens are all going after saying, you can lay your mask. It's like, first of all, the, the CDC and Fauci has said so many different things about whether we should wear a mask or whether we can't. I can't trust it. Yeah. So, you know, but, but everybody's finding their own reason to foment dissent and to be angry and nasty and cost people on the streets. Like, I'm just minding my own business. But to her, I'm endangering the health of everybody. I hope she went down to L.A. the other day or over in Montrose where there was a, a riot going right. on, a protest, and told them all to make sure that they were wearing their, their COVID masks. Where and were practicing hmm? six six foot distancing and distancing and washing hands and nobody touching anything. Yeah, where was that? They're not. So th that's why I say the riots have absolutely cured COVID. Absolutely. Yeah. Amen. There's nobody's worried about it anymore. Yeah, and there's no. I don't think there's any way to go back. I mean, they, you know, they had a hard enough time keeping us in check, but now with this, you know, you've got these governors that are talking about we'll come down and pull you out of a park or pull you off the beach, um, but they won't do anything yeah, about the rioters. Tickets, yeah. Come on. And then they're putting people in jail in New York while they're booking them, and then they turn them and let them out because there's rules that say we can't have overcrowding or whatever's going on in New York City. So okay. you're you're arresting these these rioters, and and they have to turn around and let them out. Yeah. Th that's that's making such a farce of our laws and it makes people so upset. 
because why did why did we vote why and that's that may be you know what that may just be the ultimate reason behind all of this steve why bother to vote if no one's going to do anything about it if our rules don't mean anything why should i vote in november yeah there you go that may be just the underlying the demoralization of Americans to say, it's not going to matter. I'm just one person. I'm all alone. There's no point to voting because they're just, re they're releasing violent criminals in, in California and all over because of overcrowding. The, the judge was saying, we don't want them to get COVID. So we let them out. And we've got, you know, illegal immigrants who've been released from, you know, and we, we California has sanctuary cities. They won't turn over known illegal immigrants to ICE. Yeah. because it's not fair right so what's the point of our laws what's the point of our border control what's the point of, of criminal laws if they don't matter yeah and we, i think the whole thing is to demoralize americans i do so too we don't vote and we give up yeah and we can't we, give we up. can't we can't we're trust ever, the media ever give up. We can't trust the media. We can't trust the government. We can't trust our laws. We can't trust people to hold up the Constitution. We can't trust the doctors. I think it I, now here's the conspiracy coming out in me. But I think that, of course, biblically, we can look and see there's a satanic plot to undermine everything so that everything's run on emotions. I have personally started, and I'm going to really start pushing this, a thing I call hashtag throw your stone, because this is what I think about the, the vote. There's all those people out there that told David, you got a rock and look what you're facing. And David went, you know, it's not about the rock. It's not about the giant. It's about what God's going to do. And he's given me a rock and he's given me a sling. I'm going to throw it and let him take care of the rest. And so I encourage people to take that attitude with your vote. I, it's in God's hands. Um, but I'm going to do my part, what I can do, and to let the Lord take care of the rest. So I'm going to hashtag throw my stone, my vote. I don't and know. I'm gonna... That's not a good hashtag to be doing, saying, no. Why? Tell me why. Person. Oh, because throw the stone. Yeah. yeah. Like, like, throw your brick. No, that's the wrong messaging, Steve. But bad, really bad timing. Um, you know, but I've been talking about this for about a year and just talking about this is the yeah, David and Goliath I see, I see scenario. The thing, they're going to take it away. But, maybe, but maybe. Maybe hashtag kill the giant, you know, something like that. I don't know. Stone the giant? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. yeah, I caught it the other day. I caught it the other day because I did a hashtag, uh, hashtag pushback. And uh, somebody, a good friend called and said, yeah, you know, maybe yeah, like, hashtag know. stand your ground, you know, yeah, and so I'm a little bit right. reactionary. <laughs> now I got to rethink my whole hashtag I throw know. your stone. You're yeah. right. Satan ha is, is rejoicing because he has never been able to successfully shut down the mass, the churches. Right. Yeah. Pa I'm Catholic. He's shut it all down so that we cannot go and, and worship in our churches. He's managed to do this yeah. using you know, a, a Chinese disease that came from Wuhan, right? Yeah. And, and the fear of, and, and hatred and division. And he's gotten all the churches shut down. Boy, what a, what a victory he has claimed. And what we have to do is deny him that victory. We have to go to church. Yeah, Hashtag that's right. Church. That's right. Go Hashtag go to church. church. And, and the thing about that is, is that I don't, I've said this, man, I just keep going on, but I've said this for a while is that um, I don't need an interpreter. I don't need, I do not need the Supreme Court or anybody else to interpret what right. shall make no law restricting the um, free exercise yeah. thereof. I, I, know, I speak English. I don't need an interpreter. The minute, <laughs> the minute our government says, and as far as the churches go, that's it. Uh, you've crossed the line. You, you don't have an as far as the churches go. And there's no I get it. I understand what they're saying, but there's no um, clause in there that says other than in case of a pandemic. And just because they came out with a law later that says, oh, but we've we've decided that in case of a pandemic, no, you don't get to do that. See, the Constitution says that the you Supreme can't. The Supreme Court has many, many cases going all the way back into like, I don't know, 1750s or something. That they're very, very strong. But in the case of an epidemic. That is the one very narrow area where the state does have tremendous power. And, only and you, so long as, only so long as the the facts support the notion that there is a pandemic. No. I'm submitting to you. There's no pandemic if we can have riots and things like that, and Let we me, only have 1,200. We have what 2,000 deaths in California, and half of them are in the nursing home. That there you go. And the minute that there is no longer this this epidemic, 
the state police power evaporates. Yeah, let me let me and put this to you. Treat the churches like all the other businesses, and to a degree they are in California, but to a degree they're not. So, let me put let me yeah. put this idea and 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 tell and tell me what you think. Um, of course, I'm a little bit of a constitutional originalist, um, but I have said that that if 90% of the population, all of the Congress and all of the judicial branches and the president of the United States came forward and said, we're going to make a law that in case of emergencies, we can take your guns. It's yeah. still not okay. And this is how I feel about the pandemic. I think, and I've told everybody that I deal with from the beginning, as long as our government is asking us as a church to do things, we're pretty okay. The second, whether it's a pandemic, whether it's what it is, this is just my own thought now, and I just, just kind of want to throw this out there, is that the problem is that th we believe that those rules are God-given. And so just because man comes and says, but we got to do something in case of a pandemic, I've said, and I've caught a lot of criticism, if three-fourths of the world's population died, it would still not be okay for our government to deny assembly of the church. What you're and, saying is essentially natural law supersedes our constitution. And that is yes. exactly correct because natural law informed the founders who then wrote our constitution right. to protect natural law and the Judeo-Christian. So our rights, again, our rights come from God, not yeah. government. I think so, it's okay for us to come together and do like we had talked about in the beginning. And as a, corporate body say we agree to allow the government 10 days right i like that i like that and then every and 10 days or every two weeks come back and the legislature say yeah we still need to do this again because right. that allows people to be responsible and it, it doesn't put the power in one man like the governor or one woman like right you know it doesn't, it doesn't give one power and that's what we want to avoid we want local power and we want the people to be able to weigh in on it just exactly. like some states have that and yeah. that they the legislature controls the executive branch in, in case of the governor. And yeah, I yeah. think you're absolutely right. We should have that. It's a good idea. Hey, you know what? Thanks for being on. I could seriously, you're just a joy. I, I just am very privileged to have you on the show and just keep up the good work. Keep writing those books. Tell us once more. Um, I'm going to put this up later, but tell us once again, where we can go and get your books. Cause I really want people to support you. They've, they've got to be going to shut your mouth.com. Is that right? Or .com, shut yeah. your mouth.com. And that's how the left plays the race card to silence conservatives. It even has a chapter in there about all the racist foods. There's words you can't say. There's a whole thing on liberal dog whistles. I mean, the whole thing. It's all, and, and this was by me and my co-author, Kevin Fobbs, who is an awesome, awesome guy. Former Democrat, now very conservative. Well, I'd love to get him on this show to talk about oh, uh, some he's stuff. That'd be great. He's a lot. Um, pass along. So yeah. You, Shutyourmouth.com, and the other little books are on Amazon, which is Good Guys with Guns at Home, Good Guys with Guns, or you just go to SusanSwift.net, and you'll find them there. Just go there and get all that stuff, and I'm telling you, uh, just wonderful. I think you're doing a wonderful job. Just keep it up, and uh, I think you're uh, you are a great example to gals in the United States of America, to everybody in the United States of America. So thanks for being on the show. Thanks for being you, and thanks for uh, sticking up for the Constitution and God and Trump and just glad to know you're out there in the battle with us. Thanks, Steve. Thanks for having me. I'm really honored to be with you. Thank you. All right. Pass the ammo. I, yeah, that's right. That's right. Thank you, sister. Talk to you later. Bye. And I have got my ammo. Look at that mess behind us. Well, that's Nani's project. She's a hard worker. You can see I've kind of been outside while the recording was going on. I'm going to shut it down now. Thanks for joining me. Be sure to go and buy all Susan's stuff. And, uh, Hopefully, I'll be able to inter uh, interview her co-author next time. And because I've been working, it's slipped too much sun on my brain. That's what it is. Hey, love y'all. Have a great day. Let me get us out of here. And I'm going to go back to helping my wife and uh, do stuff. Have a great day. Talk to you. With a Bible-based worldview and a sanctified imagination, it's Hoover, the face made for voiceover.